Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd on the Street and today we're installing Ubuntu 22.04. All right, everyone, it is April 21st, 2022, and today the latest long-term support release of Ubuntu was published. Ubuntu 22.04 LTS does not include too many new features, but it does have GNOME 42, which comes with a few nice tweaks like the new screenshot tool. And we also see some slightly increased customizability with the new accent color option in Ubuntu. So in this video, I'm just walking you through the process to download Ubuntu, put it on a USB flash drive, and install it on a computer. Now some prerequisites here, you will need a USB flash drive, and you need a flash drive that you are willing to wipe, so anything that you want to keep on the flash drive, copy it to a computer or to another drive before you start this process. And any flash drive that's 4 gigabytes or above should work for Ubuntu. The other prerequisite is that you take your computer that you are planning to put Ubuntu on, and if there's anything you want to save on that computer, once again, back it up to a drive or to another computer because this process is going to wipe that computer. Backing up your files is outside the scope of what this video is showing you. So with that out of the way, let's cut to the desktop and get started. All right, so here we are on the desktop, and this computer that you are downloading Ubuntu on, this can be any computer running any operating system. The one I'm using in this example is running Pop! OS, but you can already be running Ubuntu, or you can still be on Windows or Mac OS. It really doesn't matter. So open up a web browser, and we're going to go to ubuntu.com slash download. When we go there, we're going to click on Ubuntu Desktop right at the top of the page. And if we scroll down just a little bit here, we have the option to download Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. So we're going to click download on that. It's going to bring us to this download page. And after a few seconds, we'll see that download start. So as you can see, this ISO file is about 3.4 gigabytes. Like I said, any flash drive that's four gigabytes or above will have enough space to fit this entire image on it. While that's downloading, we're going to open another tab and we're going to go to etcher.io. That is going to redirect to balina.io slash etcher. And this is a multi-platform USB flashing tool. There are plenty of other good flashing tools out there. I recommend this one because it's least likely to mess things up compared to other options out there available for Windows and Mac OS. So you can come down here if you're on a different platform and it doesn't detect it properly, just click the little arrow drop down and you can select whichever option you want. But I'm here on Linux, so I'm going to click this to download. And that's going to start downloading as well. So at this point, we're going to wait for both of these downloads to finish. And once those are both finished downloading, we're going to open up our file browser to our downloads folder. So I'll just do that here. And first, we're going to locate Belina Etcher. If you're on Windows, this might be an EXE file. If you're on Mac OS, it might be a DMG. Whatever platform you're on, just open it up. We're here on Linux, so it's going to be a zip file. We need to drag the app image out of that zip file. And then we can just double click on the app image to open that up. And this is what Etcher should look like. So I'm just going to get rid of the windows in the background here just to make this look a bit nicer. And Etcher is very simple. We're going to click the blue flash from file button and we're going to select that Ubuntu ISO that we just downloaded and click open. Next, we'll select our target. Now, if you haven't plugged in your flash drive yet, go ahead and do that now. And once you plug it in, you should see it pop up there in the list as an option. So just check the box next to your flash drive. Make sure you check the name and the size to make sure it's the right one. Because once again, this will wipe the flash drive. So then click select and we'll click the blue flash button. Depending on your operating system, you might also need to type in your password at this point. That's just to give the program permission to overwrite that flash drive. And now we're going to wait for that flashing process to finish. All right, and once that's done flashing, another nice feature of Etcher is that it automatically validates that that was actually written to the drive successfully. And once that's finished, Etcher will go ahead and eject the drive for you. So at this point, you can take the flash drive out of the computer, and we are finished preparing the flash drive, so if this is the computer that you are about to install Ubuntu onto, go ahead and shut it down, power it off. If you're installing Ubuntu on a different computer, just take that flash drive and go to that other computer now. All right, so now we wanna be in front of the computer we're installing Ubuntu on. Make sure it's turned off and go ahead and plug that flash drive in that we just put Ubuntu onto. Now I have a capture card plugged into my computer, so I will cut to that when I can. But to show you this part, we need to boot this computer into that flash drive. And the process for that's gonna look a little bit different depending on what specific computer you have. Basically, you're going to want to turn the computer on and watch for any text on the screen telling you what keys to press for the boot menu and or the BIOS if there's no option for the boot menu. So I'm going to push the power button here on the side of my computer. And as you can see on the bottom, it's going to tell me to press escape for boot options. 
So I pressed escape and now we are in the boot menu. Once again, this is going to look different depending on your specific computer, but you're going to want to look for a boot override option or any option that looks like it'll let you choose what to boot off of. On this particular machine, it's called one time boot. So I'll select that option, and from the list of devices, you're going to want to select your flash drive. Now, some computers might actually list your flash drive more than once in the list. The rule of thumb is you want to select your flash drive the first time that it appears, unless there are multiple options and only some of them have UEFI at the beginning. If some of the options say UEFI and some of them don't, then select the first option in the list that's your flash drive that has UEFI in the name. That will ensure that you're installing your operating system in UEFI mode, which is generally what you want to do if your computer supports it. So I'll just press enter to boot off of the flash drive here, and we're going to get a grub menu. I will select try or install Ubuntu. Now if you've got a newer machine, if you've got a very new computer and you find that try or install Ubuntu doesn't work, or maybe if you have Nvidia graphics in your computer and you find that the first option doesn't work, you can select the safe graphics option. You might get a lower screen resolution by default until you install your graphics drivers later, but that is an option in the menu. I'm just going to select try or install and eventually we will get an Ubuntu splash screen here that's the new Ubuntu logo you're seeing at the bottom of the screen the font has been around for a while but the actual logo on the left there has been tweaked and depending on the speed of your flash drive this step might take a while as long as you see that flash drives activity light continue to blink then you know that progress is being made with loading Ubuntu off of that drive and eventually we will get a little splash screen here. At this point, you can select to try or install Ubuntu. If you're wanting to try out the user interface first before you install, or if you're wanting to use this flash drive to maybe recover an existing installation, that would be when you click the try option. If you just want to install Ubuntu straight away, you can go ahead and click install. I'm actually going to click try just because I want to get that capture card working and get a better shot of this for you guys. But when we start the installer here after we click try, it's going to look exactly the same as if we had clicked install. It's just going to be happening on a more complete desktop. All right, so before I install, like I said, I'm just going to set up the video here. All right, and I've got the screen capture going now. So if you did click try, we're going to just double click the install Ubuntu icon in the bottom right of the desktop. You could have also single clicked it at the top left. They give you lots of options. And we get that jingle once again. So on the first screen, just select your language. It defaults to English. On the next screen, if you're using a non-English keyboard layout, you can select that. We'll have the option to connect to the internet here during installation. I'm going to go ahead and do that. This will save you a little bit of time because it will actually download some of the updates that are available for Ubuntu since it was published while it's installing. And it will also be able to download third-party drivers if you choose to do that. So I'll just connect here. And when the stop button turns into a back button, you are connected. Obviously, if you're connected to ethernet, you won't have to connect to Wi-Fi on this page. You will already have internet. But here we have the actual meat of the options for installing. So we can perform a normal installation or a minimal installation. I'm going to do normal just for this video. Personally, on my own systems, I usually do minimal because it doesn't include quite as many pre-installed applications. And when you're not using those pre-installed applications, it wastes time and bandwidth having to update them all the time. So it's nice that they provide that as an option. Underneath that in the other options section, like I said, we have the option to download updates while we're installing Ubuntu. We'll keep that selected. We also have the option to install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. I would generally recommend checking that box as well. So with that, we'll click continue in the bottom right. And on the next page, we have our partitioning options. Now, if you want to do anything advanced, like maybe install with ZFS or use LVM, if you're wanting to set up any sort of special partition layout, you can choose to do that here. If you don't know what you want to do for partitioning, I would recommend just leaving it on the default erase and install option. If you wanted to attempt a custom partitioning layout, maybe you want to install Ubuntu on a system alongside another operating system, you can choose the something else option for that. But for this video, we're just going to select the default option. And the installer will give you a summary of exactly what it's doing on your disk. You can see we don't have a swap partition that it's setting up by default. We'll just have a swap file later. The only two partitions that are going to be created are our EFI system partition, the ESP, and our root partition running ext4. So we'll go ahead and click continue. On the next page, if you are connected to the internet, Ubuntu will automatically detect your time zone. If it's incorrect, you can correct it here. If you are not connected to the internet, you might have to select this manually, so just click where you are on the map and click continue. 
On the next page, you will input some information about yourself. So I'll type in my name here, and I'm going to type in the name of the computer that I want to use on the network. The username will default to your first name, all lowercase, and you can select a password as well. And it's interesting the Ubuntu installer has the option to actually log in with Active Directory on a Microsoft network now, right here in the installer. We're not going to use that, but that is there if you're using this on a corporate network. We'll just click continue, and now we get a slideshow showing us some facts about Ubuntu. If you want to see a little bit more information about what the system is doing during installation, you can expand the drop down at the bottom of the installer, and we can just click through here. Let's see what Ubuntu is advertising. We've got a page about the Ubuntu Software Center, which is going to allow installing classic packages as well as Ubuntu Snap packages. Ubuntu ships with the Rhythmbox Music Player, which gives you some organization for your music library, but obviously there are lots of other options you can install as well. We've got a photo viewer, we've got a web browser, an email client, all the normal things you would expect from a Linux distribution. LibreOffice, some accessibility options that are being advertised there. And finally, the help and support page, with I think some clickable links, yeah, that you can actually click on to open up Firefox right here in the live environment and read a bit more about Ubuntu. Okay, and installation is complete. At this point, if you clicked try earlier, then you will see this option to continue testing Ubuntu if you want to finish up any work you may have started in the live environment. But we obviously didn't do anything else other than installing, so I'm just going to click restart now. When Ubuntu's finished shutting down, it will ask you to remove the installation medium so we don't accidentally boot from it again, and then press enter. And when the system reboots, we should see that Ubuntu is now installed. We have our user that we just created. You can type your password in and press enter to log in. And there we have the Ubuntu desktop. You will see a quick introduction wizard with some options to turn analytics off, which I would probably recommend doing. You can choose to enable or disable location services. That might be useful if you use Maps applications to look up routes on the internet or things like that. And on the last page, we'll get some advertisements for various software that's available to install. Interesting to see that two of the options on the first page are Microsoft applications, and one of them is not capitalized, and the other one is a preview. So that is some interesting presentation there from Ubuntu. But there you have it. This is uh, a fully functional Ubuntu desktop now. We have successfully installed Ubuntu on this computer. We can go to the About section of the settings to view our version of Ubuntu there and our version of GNOME. As you can see, this system is running in Intel graphics, as you can see on the graphics line, so our windowing system defaults to Wayland now instead of X11, which is very interesting. And if you want to check out that new screenshot feature I mentioned earlier, just hit print screen. This used to take a full screen screenshot by default, uh, but now it actually gives you a selector. It sort of reminds me of Spectacle from KDE, uh, but you can select a rectangle or you can take a screenshot of the entire screen, you can turn the cursor on and off. Uh, really helpful if you make tutorials or things like that where you're taking screenshots all the time. But that is just about it. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments section below. If you want to talk with other Linux users, feel free to join the Nerd on the Street Discord server that's linked in the description, or keep an eye out in the description for other chat rooms that may be appearing there in the near future. And finally, if you want to help me make more videos, feel free to join the Nerd Club at nerdclub.nots.co for just $3 a month. And thank you so much to our current Nerd Club members for your continued support. And with that, I will get out of your way and let you start enjoying your new Ubuntu system. I'm Jacob Kauf, and I'm the Nerd in the Street, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.